Okay, so last time we left off at the parking lot. Mac and George are chatting while George cleans one of my windows. George, Mac says frowning. There's something wrong with the parking lot. George sighs. I'll take a look as soon as I'm done with this window. What's the problem? There are cars in it. That's what's wrong. Cars, George. Mac breaks into a grin. I think things are actually starting to pick up a bit. It's got to be the billboard. People see that baby elephant and they just have to stop and spend their hard-earned cash. I hope so, George says. We sure could use the business. Mac's right. I have noticed more visitors coming since he and George added the picture of Ruby to the sign. People crowd around Ruby and Stella's domain, ooing and aahing at the sight of such a tiny elephant. I gaze out at the huge sign that makes humans stop and spend their hard-earned cash. I have to admit, the picture of Ruby is rather cute, even if it doesn't look like a real elephant. I wonder if Mac could add a little red hat and a curly tail to the picture of me. Maybe then more visitors would stop by my domain. I could use a few oohs and ahs myself. Ruby's story. Ivan, tell me another joke, please, Ruby begs after the two o'clock show. I think I may have run out of jokes, I admit. A story then. Aunt Stella's sleeping and there's nothing to do. I tap my chin. I'm tr trying to think, trying hard to think. But when I gaze up at the food court skylight, I'm mesmerized. That means like you're focused on it. You're totally into it. I'm mesmerized by the elephant colored clouds galloping past. Ruby taps her foot impatiently. I know. I'll tell you a story, she says. A real live true one. Good one, I say. What's it about? It's about me. Ruby lowers her voice. It's about me and how I fell into a hole, a big hole. Humans dug it. Bob pricks his ears and joins me by the window. I always enjoy a good digging story, he says. It was a big hole full of water near the village, Ruby says. I don't know why humans made it. Sometimes you just need to dig for the sake of digging, Bob reflects. We were looking for food, Ruby says, my family and I, but I wandered off and got lost and went too close to the village. Ruby looks at me, eyes wide. I was so scared when I fell in that hole. Of course you were, I said. I would have been scared too. Me too, Bob admits, and I like holes. The hole was huge. Ruby pokes her trunk between the bars and make a, makes a circle in the air. And guess what? She doesn't wait for an answer. The water was all the way up to my neck and I was sure I was going to die. I shudder. What happened then? I ask. I'll tell you what happened, Bob says darkly. They captured her, put her in a box and shipped her off. And here she is, just like they did with Stella. He pauses to scratch an ear. Humans, rats have bigger hearts. Roaches are kinder souls. Flies have. No, Bob, Ruby interrupts. You're wrong. These humans helped me. When they saw I was trapped, they grabbed ropes and made loops around my neck and my tummy. The whole entire village helped, even little kids and grandmas and grandpas. They all pulled and pulled and Ruby stops. Her lashes are wet. And I know she must be remembering all the terrible feelings from that day. They saved me, she finishes in a whisper. Bob blinks. They saved you, he repeats. When I was finally out, everyone cheered, and the children fed me fruit, and then those humans led me back to my family. It took a whole day to find them. No way, Bob says, still doubtful. It's true, Ruby says, every word. Of course it's true, I say. I've heard rescue stories like that before. It's Stella's voice. She sounds weary. Slowly she makes her way over to Ruby. Humans can surprise you sometimes. An unpredictable species, homo sapiens. That means like, you don't know what you're gonna get with humans. Bob still looks unconvinced. But Ruby's here now, he points out. If humans are so swell, who did that to her? I send Bob a grumpy look. Sometimes he just doesn't know when to stay quiet or keep quiet. Ruby swallows and I'm afraid she's going to cry. But when she speaks, her voice is strong. Bad humans killed my family and bad humans sent me here. But that day in the hole, it was humans who saved me. Ruby leans her head on Stella's shoulders. Those humans were good. Doesn't make any sense, Bob says. Just don't understand them. I never will. You're not alone, I say. And I turn my gaze back to the racing gray clouds. A hit. 
Stella's foot hurts too much for her to do any tricks for the two o'clock show. Instead, Mac pulls her limping into the ring where she tracks a circle in the sawdust. Ruby clings to her like a shadow. Ruby's eyes go wide when Snickers jumps on Stella's back and then leaps onto her head. At the four o'clock show, Stella can only get as far as the entrance to the ring. Ruby refuses to leave her side. At the seven o'clock show, Stella says stays in her domain. When Mac comes for Ruby, Stella whispers something in her ear. Ruby looks pleadingly at her, means she's like begging her. But after a moment, she follows Mac to the ring. Ruby stands alone. The bright lights make her blink. She flaps her ears. She makes a tiny trumpet sound. The humans stop eating popcorn. They coo, they clap. Ruby is a hit. I don't know whether to be happy or sad. Worry. When Julia arrives af after the show, she brings three thick books, one pencil, and something she calls magic markers. Here, Ivan, she says as she slides two magic markers and a piece of paper into my domain. I like the sundown colors, red and purple, but I don't like coloring. I'm worried about Stella. All evening, she's been quiet, and she hasn't eaten a bit of her dinner. Julia follows my gaze. Where is Stella anyway, she asks, and she goes to Stella's gate. Ruby extends her trunk and Julia pats it. Hi, baby, she says. Is Stella all right? Stella is lying in a pile of dirty hay. Her breath is ragged. Dad, Julia calls. Could you come here a moment, a minute? George sets aside his mop. Do you think she's okay, Dad? Julia asks. Look at the way she's breathing. Can we call Mac? I think something's really wrong. He must know about her. George rubs his chin. He always knows, but a vet costs money, Jules. Please, Julia's eyes are wet. Call him, Dad. George gazes at Stella. He puts his hand on his hips and sighs. He calls Mac. Can't hear all of his words, but I can see George's lips tighten into a grim line. Gorilla's expressions and human's expressions are a lot alike. Mac says the vet's coming in the morning if Cell's not any better, he tells Julia. He says he's not going to let her die on him, not after all the money he's put into her. George strokes Julia's hair. She'll be all right. She's a tough old girl. Julia sits by Stella's domain until it's time to go home. She doesn't do her homework. She doesn't even draw. Let's pause here for now.